So a different perspective on coffee, which you probably already know, but it's like, here's another example of how coffee gets your system going. And it encourages the system to do what it needs to do to repair itself. But like anything, just like any energizing force, whether it's like just straight up salt with um, salt water or any kind of um, accelerant in your body, it will force your body to do what it needs to do to take care of itself by utilizing what uh, resources it has. But if you don't have enough resources to be able to support what the accelerants are doing, then that's when, yeah, people could die from um, different acceleration chemistry, chemical processes. Okay, so what I mean by this is that, so last night I peaked on, you know, with this migraine slash mini stroke headache stuff. And, um, I'm doing so much better today. Like no issues today, really. When I drank my cup of coffee, I felt the, uh, the prostaglandin hormone release the, the hormone. And I felt like a wave and like a wave, like a little, you know, like a stabbing wave in my head. But it wasn't that. And then when I scratched the back of my head, it was like I was releasing the prostaglandin hormone because then I felt the wave of hormones, the wave of the prostaglandin hormone, which is the opposite of oxytocin. So oxytocin is a pleasure hormone, right? Prostaglandin hormone is the pain hormone, but it aids in the healing process. And then the pleasure hormone helps be like a painkiller, but you don't want to be turning on that 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 hormone on a continuous basis because then that's when you tax the body when you're always like in a constant state of ecstasy okay so that's why you know you you have to measure out the and balance out the pleasure and the pain and pain really should only be because your body is healing okay and that's it um so what coffee does it accelerates the body's processes like you know when a coffee makes you poop right it 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 triggers the uh, the digestive system to do what it needs to do. It wakes people up. That's why people like coffee. So coffee isn't bad. Anyone that demonizes coffee doesn't understand that there's a place for coffee. When you have hormonal imbalances and you have um, a very, I guess, what is it? Um, a broken on-off button on your on your hormonal valves, then yeah, when someone drinks coffee like in the middle of the day and they're up all night long, it's because their body is so sensitive that uh, that whenever you turn the valve on, you don't really have a good shutoff valve, okay? So that's why some people cannot drink coffee in the middle of the day because their shutoff valve has been basically broken or it has a very slow shutoff capacity, okay? But... um. So I can drink coffee in the middle of the day. I can drink coffee in the morning. I can drink coffee at night, even espresso. Though I don't really use this. I don't really have a, I don't have like a, any kind of desire to drink, you know, espresso in the middle of the day, unless I plan to be up for a while. Um, but, you know, we're not partying right now. This is not like, you know, we're not in, uh, we're not in the old world where everything is like, whatever. Now, you know, there really isn't anything to do except, you know, just do what you got to do. Pay your bills and watch some TV or watch some Netflix and understand how the world works. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, I just wanted to give you that perspective, but I'll tell you what, I feel a thousand times better than I did the last couple of days. So I got over the worst side of that neurological upgrade that was triggered by the COVID. Okay. And I know it's the COVID because I'm pretty much immune to the flu. Well, there's a million different strains of the flu. Well, yeah, there was a million different strains of the flu between uh, March of 2018 and to, you know, and January, 2020, but I never was afflicted with the flu since then. And then this COVID comes around and I think this COVID was around early fall or maybe even sometime last year, like early last year, though they weren't, you know, doing tests for it. So there's no way to determine, you know, what triggered someone's heart attack or stroke. But now, since we know that COVID exists, you do a titer test on anyone that that has been, you know, triggered by a heart attack and stroke where they died or they suffered a paralysis, you do a titer test, you can see how many antibodies were present at the time of their attack. And then you'll know what caused someone's paralysis, what caused someone's deficiencies, what caused someone's diagnosis. Just think of all the cancer diagnoses right now. Just think of all the 
autoimmune diagnoses. Think of all the stroke and heart attack diagnoses. Go do a titer test and you'll see what the, you know, what the, the, the driving force was. It was, the, it was the antibodies that broke the camel's back. Okay. So that's why they have categorized every death as a COVID death because every death that happens now is because of COVID. People don't die in a vacuum. They die because they have so many deficiencies because of weaknesses and then the amount of antibodies that get created from the antigen because of the fact that they have uh, shortcomings. They have weaknesses and then the body can't handle as much of their environment. So it creates antibodies, to try to keep the balance. And then those antibodies eventually overtake the body and then cause then people's death, whether it's in hospice or whether someone just basically collapsing in the street. They get exposed to an antigen they can't see because it's in the air. And that's why you see those people's videos in China, people just collapsing in the middle of the street. They had a stroke, had a heart attack, and they couldn't survive it. So it's really interesting information. It's really interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. I say I'm very fascinated by all of it. And I'm worried for my friends and family that hasn't got hit this way because this, this was pretty intense. Okay, I mean, they say there's a, dif a difference between migraines and strokes and heart attacks, but they're all the same thing. It's all the same stuff. Okay, when you get stabbing pains, those are, those are, those are precursors. Those are indicators. When you get stabbing pains in your head, those are indicators of at some point you're going to short circuit. You're going to have a stroke and you're not going to survive it. I mean, the fact that your body is forcing blood and it has to release certain hormones and as well as steal minerals and steal resources from different parts of your body to make sure that blood makes it to your brain and to your heart. And you feel an event or you feel a continuous event when you have a release, a lot of release of the prostaglandin hormone, which is the pain sensation that he, that aids in the healing process. When you have a major release of that, that means the body is trying to heal from something or the body is trying to repair some damage that you have sustained and you have not taken care of and dealt with at the root level. So, you know, I welcome all pain. I know my body's working for me when I'm in pain and I'm supporting it with the J juice. Because if you're in pain and you're taking accelerants like, you know, monsters and you're taking like drinking coffee without supporting it with the J juice and you're doing the salt water flushes and all the different detoxes to uh, trigger your immune system and you don't have enough of what it takes and you have malabsorption and then you have malnutrition from that and your body is still trying to survive because it will try to, to survive up into your last breath. And if you don't have anything to back up that last breath, that's when people die because the body is still going to do what's going to, what's going to try to do is stay alive. And if you don't give it what it needs, that's when people die. So, uh, that's why, that's how people die. That, that's what death is, is when the body does not get what it needs. So when you have, when you are triggering the second law of thermodynamics, which basically is wasted energy, when you are releasing more of the nutrients than you are absorbing, that's when you know this person is, is, is gradually or exponentially triggering the death trajectory. And some of you are going to trigger it faster than others because you have that many predispositions and you're in a more aggressive environment. So you got to understand how this works, but I definitely do. And I'll tell you what, I haven't felt that kind of pain in a long ass time. I don't, I didn't enjoy it, but I knew it was necessary and it was, it sucked. I'll tell you that it sucked. But the only thing that I did which was like the very end, very tail end, when it really peaked last night was just take uh, peppermint oil and water, which I use anyways to, to brush my teeth with because I, like I like the smell of peppermint. I like the taste of peppermint. Um, so I took peppermint oil and water on a washcloth and put it on my forehead. And that was the only thing I did to relieve any pain. I didn't take any NSAIDs. I did not take any ibuprofen. I took no pills. I took no supplements. I took no powders. And I just dealt with the pain because I knew that I was supporting my body correctly with the J juice. I knew I, I could handle it. I knew this wasn't going to be forever. And um, and then this morning, uh, I drank some coffee and then my body was kicking into gear. And so the the, the prostaglandin hormone needed to release more because I'm not 100%. You know, I mean, I still get twinges here and there, but it's not as bad as it was yesterday. Yesterday was like a pulsing. It was a pulsing twinge where it was like just the constant release of the prostaglandin hormone as it was fixing the weaknesses, okay? 
And so, you know, every headache, you know, is a sign that the body is pushing through antibodies or is trying to repair some damage. And if you guys don't give your body what it needs, eventually the body is going to give out. Eventually the body is saying, hey, okay, you know, you, this is your day to die. I mean, I hate to sound so morbid, but that's how it works. Because the body is going to continuously try to do what it needs to do to keep you alive. And if you don't give your body what it needs and you don't repair the damage at the root level, then you'll have more energy, good energy going out than you're absorbing. So you could be eating all the foods, whatever foods it is, because you know, remember, food, you need food. But people are starving themselves by going on diets. People are attacking their body by working out. People are playing the discrimin discrimination game where they're basically causing malnutrition to their body, mind, and spirit thinking that that's going to help them survive longer. Yeah, it may sort of give you a state of execution because maybe, you know, if you have acid imbalances and you're avoiding acidy foods, okay, yeah, so you're not going to get a symptom of having too much acid. But now you're depriving your body of the necessary nutrients. So when you actually do have an event, such as a heart attack or stroke, and the body's trying to now steal resources, there's nothing in your body enough to, to back up that, event and that's why people die from heart attacks and strokes and aneurysms because their body is still going to have that event because you still have a weakness a pre-existing condition and you can laugh all you want and you won't have what it needs and that's why people die because you don't have enough of what your body needs to keep you alive through those events because a body is still going to want to live and the more that you take your pills powder supplements and work out and and do all your detoxes and play the discrimination game to where you're causing malnutrition to your body, you're going on that fast death trajectory. And that's why people like to believe that you don't have to live forever because they want to live that lifestyle where they want to mitigate pain through the, you know, anesthetization, you know, through the drugs and the alcohol and the sex and the rock and roll. <laughs> I sound like a freaking purist. But no, but that is what it is when you're utilizing your hormones to use it as a painkiller. Okay? I mean... Yesterday when I was getting mad at somebody on <laughs> Facebook, I had I was still dealing with my headache, right? And I got mad at somebody because they were like, you know, indirectly mischaracterizing what was going on. And that adrenaline rush was like a like a, a, a painkiller. Okay. It gave me a little bit of relief and I felt like a bit more energy. Now, I, do I want to get mad all the time whenever I am in pain? No, because that is taxing your body too much. Sometimes you have to let the prostaglandin hormone release the, the hormone to heal the body. And you got to sit with the pain because you keep trying to, you know, to suppress your immune system because you don't want to feel pain. That's when the acceleration of the death process is exponential, especially in this environment. And just wait, just wait, May 1st or May 15th, when everybody starts congregating, congregating together. And then you have the mutations of this virus. It's going to be, people say, oh, it might mutate weaker. You don't know that. The reason why things mutate weaker is because uh, you don't get as much of the viral upload because people are, are pretty much well. Okay, so they get a, a touch of it, but they don't get a major exponential like, holy crap. But when you have a bunch of really sick people, and some are not as some are not as, as symptomatic, but they're still communicable and they still have predispositions. You get a bunch of those together and they're all mixed in and, and you, don't, you can't tell someone's sick or not. And you get exposed to that viral load and it goes through incubation and it really taxes your body, that's when people experience some pretty crazy events, okay? I mean, I haven't been out at all except to go to Walmart. And then my husband, he's a truck driver, so he goes out every so often. He brings home all the, ger the germs and everything that he's been exposed to. So what had me get exposed to this is the fact that, you know, I still go to Walmart and still go shopping, though I spent like $300 the other day. So I don't have to go out again for the next, like, you know, month. So I, I spent more on my groceries this last couple weeks ago. So that way I don't have to keep going out back and forth. Because if I were to see someone the last this last week and even prior to that, they would have caught whatever I had. But I caught whatever somebody else had, you know, somewhere else. There's no way to 100%, you know, get away from it. But you better build your body correctly. You better, you know, support your body correctly. And if you don't, if you don't, the symptoms are going to, to really do a number on some people. Some people will have, will sustain predispositions from their exposure to coronavirus. I mean, they already have predispositions, but it's going to now be at the surface. It's not going to be somewhere in the background. you got to support your body correctly, you guys. You cannot play footsie with the J-Juice. But I understand some of you don't take this seriously. I get it. But I would not, 
I would not bestow what I went through the last couple of days on anybody, not even my worst enemy, because it was pure torture. Could I have taken an end set? I could have, but I would have stopped the I would have stopped the upgrade process. I knew exactly what was going on. I was upgrading. And I'm not going to get in the way of what Mother Nature's intended. And I've supported my body correctly with the J juice. And so there was no ne- there was no, no nothing necessary for me to take any kind of drugs to, to stop it. Maybe I gave myself a little bit of a distraction with the peppermint oil and water on a washcloth, but that's it. But yes, whenever you take an accelerant like coffee or anything else and the body still has to do what it needs to do, it's going to accelerate your body to do what it needs to do. You better have what it takes to back it up. All right. Have a good day. Bye.